ஹலோ ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு விபித் கெமி யூடியூப் சேனல் திஸ் இஸ் வித்யாஸ்ரீ இன் திஸ் வீடியோ ஐ வில் பி சால்விங் அ ஃபியூ கொஷின்ஸ் ரிலேட்டட் டு தி எலக்ட்ரிசிட்டி சாப்டர் ஆஃப் கிளாஸ் டென் இன் மை ப்ரீவியஸ் வீடியோ ஐ ஹாவ் டிஸ்கஸ்ட் தி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் பாயிண்ட்ஸ் தட் யூ நீட் டு ரிமெம்பர் ஃப்ரம் தி எலக்ட்ரிசிட்டி சாப்டர் ஆஃப் கிளாஸ் டென் இஃப் யூ ஹாவ் நாட் வாட்ச் மை வீடியோ ரிலேட்டட் டு தி எலக்ட்ரிசிட்டி சாப்டர் யூ கேன் வாட்ச் இட் பை கிளிக்கிங் ஆன் தி ஐ பட்டன் அப்பேரிங் ஆன் த ஸ்கிரீன் first question which of the following represents voltage option a work done divided by current into time option b work done into charge option c work done into time divided by current option d work done into charge into time so we know voltage is nothing but it represents the potential difference so the potential difference is given by work done divided by charge potential difference is nothing but it's the work done in moving one coulomb of charge from one point to the other point in a circuit so we have voltage is nothing but it is joule upon coulomb so this is the unit joule upon coulomb so i can write voltage is nothing but it is work done divided by charge by the definition of electric current current is nothing but it is rate of flow of charges so i can write current is nothing but charge upon time so by this equation i can write q is a product of current and time q is equal to it so substituting q is equal to it in the expression of potential difference or voltage we get the expression v is equal to work done divided by current into time and therefore the right answer for this question is option a work done divided by current into time question number 2 kilowatt hour is the unit of option a power option b energy option c impulse option d force in the video on electricity i have told the commercial unit of energy is kilowatt hour and the right answer here is option b energy question number 3 1 kilowatt hour is equal to option a 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 megajoules option b 3.6 into 10 to the power 5 megajoules option c 3.6 into 10 power 2 megajoules option d 3.6 megajoules so here this mega stands for 10 power 6 now we will see what is 1 kilowatt hour 1 kilowatt hour so we have joule is nothing but it is also be written as watt second so what do we do this kilowatt hour we will convert it into watt second 1 kilowatt hour is nothing but 1 kilowatt multiplied with 1 hour so 1 kilowatt means it is 1000 watts 1 hour means 3600 seconds so this will come out to be this number 36 lakh watt second so writing it in terms of 10 powers i can write this as 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 i told you watt per second is nothing but joules so this 10 power 6 is nothing but mega so i can write this as 3.6 megajoules and therefore the right answer is option d 3.6 megajoules question number 4 the unit of specific resistance is option a ohm option b ohm option c ohm meter option d ohm per meter option a and b they have given the same there might be a mistake in the question okay we will neglect one of that and we'll check which of which is the unit whether it is ohm ohm meter or ohm per meter we have the expression for resistance r is equal to rho into l by a i'll rearrange this expression to get rho it is nothing but the specific resistance right so rho is equal to r into a by l now we will write the units for all the quantities so resistance 
has unit ohm area is in terms of square meters so this is meter square divided by length has the unit meter so here comes the si unit of specific resistance so it is ohm meter ohm meter is the si unit so ohm per meter means this is how we represent ohm with meter inverse so ohm meter is option c therefore the right answer is option c question number 5 the variable resistance is called a resistor b rheostat option c open switch option d none of this so the variable resistance is nothing but it is called as rheostat and therefore the right answer here is option b rheostat and it is represented by a symbol like this in the circuit symbol of resistor with an arrow mark question number 6 an electric iron draws a current 4 amps when connected to a 220 volt mains its resistance must be option a 1000 ohm option b 55 ohm option c 44 ohm option d none of this so in the question they have given us the current that is withdrawn by the electric iron so i is given it is 4 amps and also they have given the voltage it is 220 volt they are asking the resistance which is indicated by capital letter r so if you look into the data that is provided this data can be fitted into ohms law equation of ohms law which is given by v is equal to i into r so we will use the mathematical representation of ohms law to solve this so r is given by v upon i so v is 220 volt divided by current is 4 amps we'll simplify this so we get 55 and the unit of resistance is ohm so therefore the right answer here is option b 55 ohm question number 7 if an electric charge of 300 coulomb flows for 10 minutes then what is the value of electric current flowing option a 5 amps option b 0.05 amps option c 0.5 amps option d 5.5 amps they have given charge which is represented by q it is 300 coulomb and the time of flow they have given it is 10 minutes we know the si unit of time is seconds so this 10 minutes we will express in terms of seconds so this is 600 seconds they have asked us to find the value of current means i we have to find so we know current is nothing but it is the rate of flow of charges so i is equal to q divided by t q is 300 coulombs and time is 600 seconds so we get 1 by 2 which is nothing but 0.5 amps therefore the right answer here is option c 0.5 amperes question number 8 the materials having very high resistivity are called as option a insulators option b semiconductors option c superconductors option d conductors it is given that material is having very high resistivity high resistivity means current flowing will be very very less and among the given options we have insulators which is bad conductor of electricity or the electricity which is flowing is very very less and therefore the right answer is insulators see in case if you consider conductors they have less resistivity conductors are the one the materials which allow electricity to pass through them so conductors will have less resistivity whereas insulators they have high resistivity and semiconductors are the one which has conductivity in between that of conductors as well as insulators moving to question number 9 the equivalent resistance in series combination of resistors will be option a less than each individual resistance option b greater than any individual resistance option c equal to any individual resistance option d none of this so they are asking equivalent resistance in series combination so it is given by rs is equal to r1 plus r2 in case if two resistors are connected in series 
So the equivalent resistance is nothing but sum of the resistances, right? So therefore, it is always greater than any individual resistance. Right answer here is option B. Question number 10. The fuse wires are connected in dash in an electrical circuit to protect the circuit from extra current flow. Option A, parallel. Option B, series. Option C, both A and B. Option D, none. The right answer here is option B, series. So what happens? Say in electrical circuits, in order to protect the circuit or the electric devices from extra current flow, we'll be connecting the fuses in series. So fuse is connected in series with respect to the device or the circuit. So what happens when extra current flows? The fuse wire has very, very low melting point that because of the jowls heating, the fuse wire will melt. So when this fuse wire melt, what happens? Circuit is broken at this end. So when circuit is broken, it means that no electricity can flow further. That is how the circuit is protected from the extra current flow. Question number 11. If two resistors of value 20 ohm and 30 ohm are connected in series, then they are equivalent resistance is option A 50 ohms, option B 1 by 50 ohms, option C minus 50 ohm, option D 0. So in the question it is given two resistors are connected in series. So in that case equivalent resistance is given by Rs is equal to R1 plus R2. So I will indicate this 20 ohm as R1 and 30 ohms as R2. So substituting this value into the equivalent resistance formula, I can write Rs is equal to 20 ohm plus 30. So 20 plus 30 comes out to be 50 ohms. Therefore, the right answer is option A, 50 ohms. Question number 12. Keeping the potential difference constant, the resistance of the circuit is halved. The current will become option A, 1 fourth, option B, 4 times, option C, half, option D, double. Okay, we will consider the two cases. In first case, potential difference is V1, resistance is R1 and current will be I1. So now, second case we will consider. So this is first. In case 2, potential difference is constant means V2 is equal to V1 and the resistance of the circuit is halved means R2 I will write it as R1 by 2 because it is half of the value what will be the current I2 is what we have to find. So from Ohm's law we have V is equal to IR right I is equal to V by R I can write. Now, in the second case, what is the current that they are asking? So, I2, what is V? V2 is nothing but it is V1 itself. It is equal. So, I write V2 by R2. So, V2 is nothing but it is V1. And R2 is nothing but it is R1 by 2. So, R1 by 2, which is equal to 2 times of V1 by R1. So, V1 by R1 is nothing but I1. So here itself I will write I1 is nothing but it is V1 by R1. So from all these things what I can write that I2 is nothing but it is 2 times of I1. And therefore the right answer is option D. So instead of using Ohm's law you can also directly write it. We know current and resistance are inversely related. Right? I is inversely related to resistance. They are telling that resistance is reduced to its half. It means current has to increase. So current will be doubled. Therefore, the right answer here is option D. Question number 13. If in the given arrangement, the three resistors are to be replaced by a single resistor, what will be the value of this resistor? Option A, 4 ohm. Option B, 6 ohms. Option C, 9 ohm. Option D, 18 ohms. Let me denote these resistors as R1. R2 and R3. So the resistance values of R1 is 6 ohm, R2 is 6 ohm, R3 is 6 ohm. So if you observe into the given circuit, the two resistors R1 and R2 are connected in parallel. 
are in parallel and these two r1 and r2 in parallel and they are in series with r3 the two resistors r1 and r2 are connected in parallel then these two together connected to r3 in series so first we will find the equivalent resistance in case of parallel so we have 1 by rp which is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 so this is the equivalent resistance given when resistors are in parallel so 1 by rp which is equal to 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6 which is equal to 2 by 6 which is 1 by 3 so 1 by rp is 1 by 3 so the equivalent resistance of parallelly connected resistors is 3 ohms now r1 and r2 are connected in series with r3 so here this uh, equivalent resistance is in series with r3 so i can write rs is nothing but it is rp plus r3 so the total resistance is given by these resistors when connected in series with the r3 resistor okay so rp is 3 ohm plus r3 is 6 so it is 9 ohms so if you want to replace all these three resistors with single resistor then you have to replace it by a 9 ohm resistor therefore the right answer here is option c 9 ohms thank you for watching like and share the video if the contents provided are useful to you subscribe to my channel for more updates